Okay, I'm really upset because it keeps deleting my junction all talks, but it must be because God must think that I don't understand my junctionals appropriately, so I'm going to explain it again. Because this is all about learning. That's what it's all about. So <laughs> we're going to start from junctionals again. All right, now, you want to remember, now how many times do I have to go through this and find this heart? You want to remember when you are thinking of your heart, that everything is supposed to be originating from here, shooting down into your atrioventricular node, into your bundles, and your Purkinje fibers. Now, if something's wrong here, and it's not working right, this is your backup plan. It's your plan B. Sometimes it's irritated and it fires too. But if it's going at a slow rate, like 40 to 60 beats per minute, that is the intrinsic rate here. It's your plan B. It's your backup guy. It's going to back up your sinoatrial node if something's wrong. Now, when you're looking at your EKG strip and you see something and you notice it doesn't have a P, that's probably because your backup guy is doing the work. Now, the reason why is if you see this diagram, it starts from here and it goes down to here. So this arrow is the depolarization of your atrium. Now, if this isn't working, how does your atrium get depolarized? Well, your backup guy is depolarizing your atrium. Now, if that's happening, that's not the normal pathway. So it's going to look totally weird or it's going to be completely absent on your EKG. But this is the normal place for it to start depolarizing your ventricles. So your QRSs are going to all be narrow because this part is normal. Now the way you're going to know the difference is that this is always going to have it's always going to have an intrinsic rate of 40 to 60 beats per minute. Now, if you have a sinus rhythm, you got your PQRST, PQRST, it's boom 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 PQRST, right? And then all of a sudden you see a early QRS. It's narrow. It's normal, but it's early and it doesn't have a P, that's going to be your PJC or your premature junctional contraction. Now remember, premature is always going to mean early. So this is coming earlier than it's supposed to. So when you use your calipers or you're using your lines to kind of measure it out, you're going to look for similarity and make sure everything is going equal. If you see that beat and it's coming a little earlier than it should and there's no P, you know that it's going to be a PJC. These are usually asymptomatic and you just want to monitor them. Maybe even do like a, a chem panel, I guess, to see if there's anything going wrong. Um, a junctional escape beat is going to be late. So it's like they're escaping from jail. They're getting out. But actually, it's not like they're escaping from jail. It's more like the backup guy that I was telling you about. This is like the person doesn't, the guy doesn't show up for the date and or the guy doesn't show up for the birth of the child. And so now you got to cover his butt. <laughs> um, so this is the cover. It's the cover for the beat that was supposed to be there. So if you're walking it out and then you see, hey, it was supposed to be a beat right there. Nothing came, but then now here's this strange QRS complex. It's normal, but there's no P. That's a junctional escape beat. Now remember, that one's always going to be a narrow QRS. Now if you see three or more in a row, no P, just a flat line and then a QRS and then obviously a T, you're going to be dealing with a junctional rhythm. Now, a junctional, I guess the junctional escape rhythm is like if the sinal atrial node just kind of gives up, uh, and then the junctional, and then the AV node takes over. Um, the difference with this one is that um, you kind of have a, sin a sinus beat going, and then it stops, um, and then it goes into this junctional escape beat. And I guess that's called like a junctional escape rhythm because your heart, your junctional, um, your AV node is taking over for your sinal atrial node. If you have an accelerated junctional rate, that's if the rate is 61 to 100 beats per minute. 
So remember, the intrinsic rate of your AV node is 40 to 60 beats per minute. It's kind of like a tear. So the top part of your heart is normal, 60 to 100. If you go beneath it to the AV node, that's going to be 40 to 60 because it's not supposed to be starting, you know, the beats for your heart. If that doesn't work, and you go even lower to your bundle of his or your Purkinje fibers, you're talking about 20 to 40 beats per minute. It's going to be going much slower. So just remember, 60 to 100, AB node 40 to 60, Purkinje is 20 to 40. It gets slower as you go down because it wasn't meant to be originating the heart, to originating the whole beat of the heart. So if, um, like I said, if you see that rate from 61 to 100 beats per minute, that's your accelerated junctional. And if you see the rate is um, over 100, that's going to be your junctional tachycardia. I've actually never seen anybody with a junctional tachycardia. Um, let's see. Now, if you see one of these runs on the monitor, more than three, and you go up to that person, yo, guy, if they don't respond, then you're kind of checking for a pulse and uh, maybe doing compressions. <laughs> but uh, if they respond, then you want to check their vital signs, put a pulse ox on them, how they breathe in. If it's above 92, 93%, you don't really need to put any oxygen on them. Sometimes I just like to put the oxygen on them anyways because you know it's going to make the whole load, their, you know, easier on the heart, whatever. I just do it. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. <laughs> but um, you do the pulse ox, you do the oxygen, then you want to make sure you got an IV and a patent going and a 12 lead EKG, a new set of vitals. So like, remember you always want to check to make sure they're awake and uh, check for their pulses, make sure they're breathing because you don't want to run to the doctor and be like, yo, they got an AV, a junctional beat going and he goes in the room and they're like, oh, you will, somebody will be talking to you if that happens. Um, everything goes okay if the doctor's like new, <laughs> this is his first day and he's like, I don't know what to do. And maybe you could suggest, maybe what about some adenosine? Just to, you know, see, you know, he'll probably have a book that he'll pull out and he'll be like, maybe you should do this. Um, you can also try some vagal maneuvers before you even go to the doctor. Um, you know, just, that's the bear down face. Vagal. <laughs> you can remember it like that. Um, also, they may suggest some calcium channel blockers or some beta blockers. <sighs> now we're finally going to go into ventricular rhythms. I think I got it this time. Ventricular, ventricular, 